Today we were discussing solder tips, and so I have a uh, FX951 solder station along with the triple eights as well. But the the 951 is a lot uh, better, you know, uh, maybe more professional soldering iron, and it comes with you know the tips are completely the the whole guts of the thing come out right. So it's it's you know the thermocouple, the element, and the tip is is all one piece. And so we're talking about what kind of tip should we get? And if you look at Amazon, Amazon has a lot of variety packs, and that might be fine, and you might even save a little bit of money. But what I wanted to talk about was here at the Hako page itself, they have a really great website and tutorial describing all the various tips. And now whether or not you have a Hako or use a Hako or whatever, I think that this is a really great site. I just wanted to show you guys where you could go to to get the information on what kind of tips are available. And I think if you're somewhat new to this, you might be kind of surprised at the variation that there are. So just to show you how I got here, this is the Hako website, and up here you can see I, I picked the, the FX951, and then right here, depending upon where you live, you have a different series available to you, probably most likely because of the power requirements. So I picked the T15 series, because I'm here in North America, and and all, all it does is it just drops you down a list, right? And so you, you focus on this, and we've got this, the, the BCM, CM, the BC, and these are kind of similar. I'll show you in a second. The Type B, you know, all the ones that you're used to, you know, the kind of the standard uh, chisel tip, if you will. Now, I, we, whatever, call these a chisel tip, but the one that we call a hoof tip, they call um, beveled, which is kind of like chisel, right? So just know that the hoof tip one is our bevel one. We'll, we'll get to that, like I said. So you look down here, and right now, if this is true, this seems to be about true. The T15 DL32 means that it is a 3.2 millimeter wide, if you look at the picture here, uh, chisel tip. And for me, I find that that one's a little bit on the huge side for everything that I want to do for the surface mount stuff. Even for the through-hole stuff, I think that it's kind of large. And maybe if it was the triple eight that you needed to have the thermal mass so that you could heat something up, maybe that's good. But with the, uh, the FX951, it seems, I, I like the smaller ones. Let's just put it out there. So if you want one of these bigger ones for whatever situation you're working on, then that's what we're here to talk about. That's what I want to show you. You pick the one that you want. So for example, I might like to have a smaller one here. So the D12, the D12 is got a, uh, the, the tip right here is 1.2 millimeters wide. So kind of, you know, get out a measure and stick and, and figure out what, what you think that is. And if you already have one of these, or if you've got the triple eight, then maybe look at the tip that comes with it, find the name of it, go look it up and see what the dimensions are so that you can get some kind of a, you know, banana for comparison. Then um, I guess I'll go to the next thing that I like is I like these hoof tips. I like them for the plain old regular everyday soldering. I really do like the chisel tips because it's it's nice because you can get in the corner of, let's say, a through hole and you can kind of touch the edge of an SMD component and the pad. So that's probably my, probably my go-to regular, but then right after that is going to be the tip, or I mean the, the hoof tip. Uh, I have to say that the conical I, I have zero use for. I use it when it happens to be hanging out stuffed in a machine, but as soon as I get around to thinking about it, I, I change it out. I just don't like it. So um, let, let me show you how this works. So you come up here and you say, okay, well, what's the difference between the BCM and the BC? Well, right here, they actually have a, a thing that explains the differences. But if you hit this here, you say how to use these. And this is such a great thing. It, it's It's even a great solder tutorial in general, just to show you ways that you could use it that is maybe different than what you do, and maybe different than what you've been doing for a very long time. So I just open that one up in a new tab, and what you get right here is this. So you see in these these beveled tips, these, these cut 
tips, at least at this point right now that we're talking about here, you, you take a cone, you slice it, and you get a flat one, or you get one with a little concave dish inside of it. And this is really cool because you can get it to kind of hold a little bit of solder in it, like one of the, um, the inkwell fountain type pens, and uh, great for, well, right here, drag soldering, you see? Oh, and then see right here. So this is, I wasn't going to mention this, but it's right here in front of my face. Because you have the hollow section, if you need, like say you've bridged a couple little pins right here, you can bring this in and it will kind of wick up the solder that's already there. So for cleaning, cleaning up an area there. Then I will come down to here. Now, I don't necessarily want to go through every single one of these. Maybe. I'm not sure, right? I just wanted to show you the page because I think it's pretty cool. Now, uh, let's see. BC slash C examples here. So this is showing you the tips again. And so maybe if you just first look at it, you might think that they kind of look the same. But what you're seeing is this one here is, is a cone that's been sliced. And this one is more of a cylinder. Well, it is a cylinder that's been sliced. And that might benefit you in different ways. Coming back to here, I want to show you specifically the differences. So when you're trying to understand the nomenclature here, you can kind of see what you're seeing. So again, you know, it might have some kind of piece of information that denotes, you know, maybe, um, well, not so much here, but denotes the, the diameter or the length or something of the tip and then the quality of it, the shape of it. So you want to kind of refer back and forth to this when you see things like it's a BCF versus, versus a BC or, um, you know, BCM. Okay, so let's see, I was already there. So we'll open up this one. Then looking at the specific differences here between the BC slash C and the BCF slash CF, um, as of yet, I haven't really looked up what the heck the, you know, is there, is there kind of a code with the words here? I, I don't know about that. But if you look here, kind of a real interesting specific. This one here, the BC slash C, is is kind of like your typical tip where you could tin this whole uh, kind of affected area here. And the BCF slash CF only right here will tin. And so if you just see from, I'm not going to play the video, but if you just see from the, the picture here, you can tell. And so right away, you know, if you want to have the solder cling right to this tip right there, maybe again for drag soldering and what have you, maybe that's going to be better for you. So kind of a neat specific that I wasn't aware that they had in these, these different tips. So I think those are the basics. Uh, in here are the different conical tips. And uh, again, back to the D types here that are the, the wider chisel tips. I want to bring up this one, the, the, the type J or shape J. Whether or not you use this or not, maybe you bought it and it's kind of hanging around. Uh, another nice thing about these types of, you know, the built-in element soldering irons, again, as, as opposed to just the, the interchangeable tips like the FX888, uh, you can rip the thing out essentially while it's still hot. You just pull the thing out and, you know, they got kind of like a little hot pad for you to do that and you can change the whole thing. It's not so conducive to change tips when you're using a triple eight because you've got to unscrew the whole thing and tear it apart and so you kind of end up using the one you got and just sort of leaving it there, right? So this one here is kind of a bent one, and I'll go ahead and open up the example to show you that. It's really nice if you look right here. Uh, if you've watched some of my videos on, well, I, I, I do the, the drones, the quadcopters and stuff a lot. I don't really do a whole lot of videos on them, you know. I'm, I'm not kind of showing off the whole FPV thing. But anyways, we do work on a lot of those things. And these kinds of boards, the flight control boards on these specifically, there are a lot of components that you find yourself reaching over other components to try to get at. And so like you see in this picture right here, you're trying to reach over some of these resistors, capacitors right here to get at this guy. Kind of a nice tip so you don't have to, you know, torque your angle all out here to try to get at it. And that's that's pretty convenient. So consider grabbing one of these. Then uh, the typical stuff down here, I found that, you know, pretty much all the pictures will give you kind of a, a drag solder example of it, how, how you could do that. This one here, I think it probably is okay, but I think there's um, better examples such as these right here. So these, these kind of knife blade tips here, they can be used 
really effectively to just swipe down the side like this. So you've got kind of, again, like a bevel on this, sort of. And so you're, you're heating the lower pad a bit and you're making a bit of contact with the pins themselves. Uh, and then you could just apply your solder and just, you know, if you're skilled at this, you can just run the solder down and just slide it down and, and do a real good drag solder. Nice description all along the way here. Then towards the bottom, we get to some of these really cool shapes here. So this one here, your, your, your shape quad, and then later down here, the tunnel. Pretty cool tips, whether or not you want to get one of these for your, you know, quiver. Um, it, you know, that's up to you, but look at this thing here. So this, if you've got a lot of the same type of, type of package, you know, I mean, it's got to be pretty specific. You can solder this whole box up, stamp the thing, and again, theoretically, get it all in one shot. Kind of neato. And then down here, the tunnel shape is the same kind of thing, but it uh, it just has it in, well, I guess what they're like, they're saying a tunnel shape. So for your dip type packages here, you just solder along the side, cover over the chip, smash it down, job done. Then let's say you have a little bit of like a uh, kind of like board to board interconnect or something like that that you need to do, or just one side of uh, a, a chip. The spatula with the different widths here, you see, you know, 10 millimeters or so, 15, 21. You go, uh, you get one of these, and you can just basically like a trowel, you just get a bunch of, of solder on this thing, grab this, whoop, just slide it across here. Uh, look at this. For, for just dragging across a whole pile of stuff. Maybe you want to fill in some vias or, I don't know, for ther thermal contact or something, just swipe it across, fill in the whole mess. And then our R shape, similar to the tunnel, but just a tiny version of that, where if you have um, some small, either IC or anything, potentially maybe even some kind of SMD component that will fit in this gap, you just switch over, bang, nail it down. Now these, all of these, I can see this being pretty damn specific. You know, you're trying to hand solder a whole crap ton of boards and you just haven't like wanted to pull the trigger to have the, the, the board house do it for you and you're trying to be as productive as possible. Well, then maybe you might get some of these. And then lastly, our SB and special application type, they're all kind of like special ones. Funny odd shapes that are gonna help you get into different places like the long reach ones down here. So this long reach, long reach bent chisel and just the long reach uh, chisel itself might be kind of nice for you so you can see the dimensions right here and then you can speculate what you might need or be able to use this for, okay? So that's all I wanted to show you. I just wanted to kind of clue everybody into, you know, all the tips available and if you're trying to figure out which one to get and you're a little bit dissatisfied with just the, you know, the selection that is available on Amazon and you're maybe not, you know, really wanting to spend money on, um, kind of a variety pack, like I said, because you're, you're thinking that that's great, it's a good deal, but I know that I'm going to use two out of the five. Maybe you just want to do this. Now, lastly, I will say, when you find the number itself, it's kind of hard. Well, it, they don't show up all on Amazon because some of these are pretty specific, particular. I've found that DigiKey and maybe Mouser and, and you know some of those other ones, they have it. I, I just looked up one real quickly. I know that DigiKey had, I think it was the D-type... Um, 1.5 millimeter, they had it, Amazon didn't, you know. So poke around, once you get the name, you should be able to find it somewhere. Good deal, thanks a lot.